Well, hi and welcome to my office. Today's subject, flash photography in a forest environment with the New Holland honey eater. They're breeding at the minute. I have a nest right in front of me. Now, though I knew that that nest was there because my thinking log is just here. I come and sit here a lot. So I saw them taking some nesting material in there. And because I'm coming here a lot, they're used to me being around. So they're reasonably comfortable with me. Now normally, I would work myself up to an, a new nest that I've found. I'll come and stand there for five or 10 minutes, watch what happens with their reactions to me being around, and then I leave. And I'll do that as much as I possibly can, staying away from the nest, letting them get used to me being around and get a little bit more comfortable with me because once the chicks hatch like i've got in front of me here now they'll be reasonably comfortable with you being up near their tolerance zone now what's a tolerance zone well that's where a bird or an animal will tolerate you as long as you stay away from that line so there's an imaginary line there you step inside that, you'll notice their body language will change. They'll get agitated, like with the New Holland honey eater here. How they work is they'll come and sit up in that tree, they check things out, make sure that there's no one around, or no other bird or animal around. They'll go straight to the bottom of the bracken where this nest is, then they work their way up. Now, if they're nervous about me being here and too close in that within that tolerance zone inside it they'll sit up there and they won't move or they'll eventually drop down and they'll just go to and fro they won't come out and appear at the nest i'll see them constantly going backwards and forwards well that tells me they're stressed out they're not going to go to the nest and it's not going to work for either of us I'm upsetting them, the chicks aren't getting fed when they need to, and I'm not getting a shot. So what do we do? We back off, we work out where our tolerance zone is. So with these birds at the minute, they're happy for me to be five metres away because I come and sit here a lot, but it's when the chicks hatch that I start photographing, all right? Uh, because they're constantly coming backwards and forwards. Mum's not sitting on the nest all the time. She's coming backwards and forwards and she's feeding the chicks and that's the shots that I want, those action shots. Uh, so we've talked about tolerance zones. Let's talk about the setup that I have here. Why have I got the camera on a tripod? Because I don't want to wear my arms out. It's much easier on my body if I'm on the tripod. It's a quick release so if something happens around me I can uh, get a shot of something else going on. So I'm not completely tied to the tripod, but this helps me out on only on one spot anyway. So it's just a smart thing to do. All I have to do is just get onto here with as little movement as possible, not scaring mum. Now next we have our camera set up. Why the hell have I got a flash on? A forest environment we have dynamic range problems. Occasionally, like this nest here, it ends up in beautiful, full-on sun at a certain time of day. It's very rare to get that, but here I have it. it this morning, I took a couple of shots without any flash on. And that's great, that's what I prefer. We get really nice exposure. Everything looks natural and it looks really good. But even using the flash, most people aren't going to know that a flash was in, involved. It looks like natural light anyway. Just depends on how you go about setting your camera up and how much flash you have on. All right. So what 
was happening this morning. Beautiful low light coming over this tree just here, straight onto the nest. So as the sun starts moving around, uh, of course the lighting conditions are changing on here. And like what it's doing now, it's partly cloudy, so it's going in and out of the clouds anyway. So this is why I've had to introduce the flash. So here's a shot without the flash when we've got a dynamic range problem, there's lots of shadows. And here's one with a flash on. So we, we're taking away the deep shadows and we're introducing, oh, we've got both mum and dad there. So they're quite comfortable with me, even though I'm talking. So just hang on a sec. I don't want to interrupt them too much. Okay. <laughs> now let's have another look at a different way of setting up when there's harsh sunlight coming up. Because now that the sun is right up high on a higher angle, now it's a very intense light but it's still very filtered, so it's hitting spots around the nest on different plants that are reflective surfaces. So to compensate for that, I am exposing for that. So I've turned my uh, ISA right down. I've, I'm not touching my shutter speed, that stays fixed, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but I, I've got my aperture closed right down as well. Just so that the highlights aren't too bright, they're not blowing out. So here's one with a photograph of that. So it doesn't look right, does it? It's just terribly underexposed. But let's introduce the flash. Fixes everything up, the highlights are dappled down and we're getting beautiful light on our subject and it looks natural and it's quite a good image. Now it's time to talk about how I have to flash that up. Now because I have a very fast shutter speed of a thousandth of a second, we need to sync up the flash with that. So I put it into high speed sync mode. So on our flash, this is for a Canon camera flash, there's a H with a lightning strike symbol. So we set it to that, so it syncs up with that thousandths of a second shutter speed. If we didn't do that, it would go into a default mode, which is uh, two hundredth or two fiftieth of a second. So just override what I've set up on the camera. So we don't want that. We want it in high speed curtain sync mode. So we don't have any issues and everything will work the way it's supposed to. Now the flash head is very important as well. We don't want a beam that comes out wide. I want it concentrated. That way I can actually turn the power of the flash down depending on the distance of my subject, all the different lighting conditions that will happen, whether there's just dappled light, you know, all those sort of things. So the flash head, um, we need to set that to the maximum. Now with this, is what they call zoom head. I've set the zoom head to as high as it'll possibly go, which is set for a 200 millimeter lens. Mine's a 300 millimeter lens, but that's as far as it'll go. So that'll give me that beam. We're just concentrating our beam on a section there. So it pulls the flash head right back. I think that's from memory. So that it tunnels it. And um, yeah, we're not deferring light out. We can set the power down lower and that's going to help all sorts of things with reflective surfaces on, you know, bits of twigs and the bracken, the dead bracken is a reflective surface. The uh, stalk's a reflective surface. So we're, we're always keeping that in mind when we're using a flash, watching out for that sort of thing. Keeping the power down as least as possible to help with battery life but also to help the scene so that it stays nice and looks natu more natural. But so let's move on 
Now we're talking about small birds now, which is mostly what I photograph in this reserve. They move so quick. So have, having a very fast shutter speed is necessary. And it's the same with a lot of the animals, especially my passion, the Agile Antichinus. A shutter speed of a thousand, no less. Any less, you'll see blurring, especially if the mum lifts her wings or something like that, or the, the chicks are just moving real quickly, you'll get blurring. So I never go below a thousandth of a second, unless the circumstances sort of call for it. You know, things are a bit more subdued. When, when there's full sunlight, but it's dappled, I've got my ISO right down to six, 600. As things change, less light coming in there, I'll put the ISO back up and work from there. All right, so let me put a few images up and I'll put all the details underneath of the camera settings themselves. So that's how I'm setting up in a forest environment when we've got dynamic range problems, which is 99% of the time, using a flash to alleviate all the hassles of blown out highlights on particular parts of the, the image, and the rest would be in darkness. So introducing the flash to fix that up. Uh, our bird being in dappled sort of light with part of its body being in the shadows so that is all I've got for you today hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff click on my pretty little face just down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen hit the little bell you'll get notification whenever I do anything else and if you want to go and have a look at all the mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past click on my icon right here it'll take you to my channel at the end of this video It'll take it in my channel. There's well over 100 videos there to choose from. I do these sort of tutorials every now and then. Plus, uh, if I get any new camera gear, I'll review it and give you my honest opinion. When I go on adventures, I take you with me. I also am known for doing some uh, slightly comedical uh, videos as well. Dad's joke stuff. So go and have a browse. There'll be something there of interest to you, I am sure. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife and stay away from that coronavirus. Stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.